A year passes and you've managed to get out of the basement. But to make it out of the house, you must pick one of the three doors the scientists created. The first room is filled with venomous cone snails. The second has five very hungry polar bears. The third is a saltwater tank with hundreds of piranhas. Which is the safest? The third room. Piranhas are freshwater fish and can't survive in salt water. Three prisoners are sitting at the table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and the shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's rich, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Rich people try to keep low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. A group of researchers is trying to test your knowledge. They take you into their lab on an island in Italy and present three dishes to you, but only one is safe to eat. Which do you choose? Cheese infested by maggots? Boiled pufferfish liver? Or fly agaric mushrooms? Pufferfish liver can be poisonous if it isn't prepared properly. And the fly agaric mushrooms are among the most dangerous in the world. Maggot cheese, on the other hand, is actually a delicacy in Sardinia, Italy. So it's perfectly safe to eat. Really? One day, you wake up in an arena without knowing how you got there. From the speakers, you hear that you must fight one of three hybrid animals. Which one do you pick to stay alive? A polar bear with the head of a rattlesnake, a hippo with a lion head, or a hybrid with the face and body of a great white shark and the limbs of a jaguar. The great white shark hybrid. Since its body has gills, it won't be able to breathe outside water. You're an astronaut, and you've made it to Mars for an expedition. A team member greets you at the entrance to the base in their workout clothes. When you get in, you close the door and wait for the room to pressurize before taking off your spacesuit. When you walk in, you get a message that someone at the base is an imposter. Who could it be? A fellow astronaut who covers his face because he got a sunburn, an engineer with flaky patches on her skin, or the person who greeted you at the door earlier. The person you saw earlier. If they were human, they wouldn't survive outside the base in the planet's atmosphere. While walking in the forest, you come across a mysterious local that blocks your way. He tells you if you solve his riddle, you're free to go. But if you don't, you'll have to stay in this forest forever. The riddle goes like this. Your seas without water, coasts without land, towns without people, and mountains without land. What are you? Well, you're a map. You decided to go exploring a local cave. You walk inside, and a landslide suddenly blocks the way back. Ahead, there are four tunnels, each with a sign showing you which dangers lurk inside. Which one do you choose to stay safe? The tunnel filled with molten lava, the one filled with poisonous gas, the one swarmed by bats, or the tunnel with venomous spiders? You pick the last one. Spiders don't hunt humans for food and usually avoid them altogether. You just moved into a new town with only two barbers. You visit both their shops to decide which one you should pick. The first shop is a bit messy, and the barber needs both a haircut and his beard trimmed. The second shop is shiny, tidy, and the barber is well shaved with a perfect haircut. But you decide to go to the first shop. Why?
Each barber cuts the other barber's hair, and you pick the one who gave the other a nice haircut. You've got a job as a helper to someone's mansion. But the mansion owner gives a tricky task. I need the least number of chairs for a table to seat four fathers and two grandfathers with four sons. You can't ask any questions, but what's the least number of chairs you must put out? Four. The fathers could also be grandfathers, and they're all sons. Mary was selling a rope for $3. The buyer gave her $10, but because she had no change, she went to the grocery store next door to get some. She then returned with $7, but then the clerk from the store came outside to tell her that she gave her a counterfeit bill. Mary called a detective, and she must tell him how much she had lost. What should her answer be? $7 and the rope. Guys arrived at the local hospital to film an interview with a famous professor, Dr. Thompson. But first, he had to help four people. Kyle complained, I'm misophonic. I wash my hands a hundred times a day. Kelly explained, I'm afraid of heights. I can't even ride a bike. Fred complained, I have a strong fear of water. I can't even look at a faucet. And Jenny claimed that she had claustrophobia. She always fainted in elevators. Dr. Thompson knew for sure that only one of these people told the truth. Can you tell who? Fred can't be afraid of water. He has an aquarium with fish in his house. Jenny lives in a tiny van, so she can't have claustrophobia. And Kyle's apartment is too messy for someone who has a fear of dirt and germs. So it's Kelly. She sleeps on the floor, which is normal for someone with an abnormal fear of heights. Next stop, creepy caves. Zach and Peter went to see ancient ruins in the middle of the woods. Many people had disappeared there. The guys heard weird screams coming from the cave, ran toward the sound, and got lost. Suddenly, they saw three tunnels. The first tunnel was filled with fire. A hungry vampire was waiting in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with poisonous apples. Which way should they choose? The third tunnel is safe. The guys don't have to eat those apples. After their epic adventure in the cave, Zach and Peter went to the supermarket to buy some groceries. I'm guessing the apples made them hungry. Can you see a ghost in this room? Here it is! Peter and Zach found out that people had seen some zombies in this abandoned town. So they decided to make a stop there and check for themselves. The town looked empty. The guys were very disappointed. But suddenly, a crowd of hungry zombies popped out of nowhere and started chasing them. The guys ran into a hospital and locked the door. Zombies began breaking the door down. Luckily, a helicopter with a rescue team arrived quickly. It was going to land on the roof. Zack and Peter needed to get there as soon as possible. Help them find the shortest way. Here's the way. After saving the guys, the rescue team invited Peter and Zack to go skydiving together. Ooh, yeah. They agreed and put on parachutes. They took this picture inside the plane right before the jump. Can you tell which of these people is in danger? This man over here, he's wearing a regular backpack instead of a parachute. The guys made a stop on the shore of a famous mysterious lake. They went fishing. Suddenly, a mermaid jumped out of the water and dragged Zack into the lake. Peter jumped into the water to rescue his friend. Finally, he found Zack wrapped in seaweed on the rocks in the middle of the lake. Three mermaids had gathered around Zack and were singing their songs. When they noticed Peter, they said, We'll set your friend free if you guess which one of us is not a real mermaid. Can you help the guy? Mm, this lady over there, her tail isn't real. 
Sometime later, Peter's aunt, Sarah, called them. She was very upset. She found out that she had left her diamond ring in the guy's trailer. Hmm. Peter found the ring and said, no worries, we're gonna send it back to you. But there was a problem. If he sent it by post without locking the box, the ring would be stolen. Both Peter and Sarah had some locks, but neither of them had the key that would open the lock of the other. Still, they managed to make it work and Sarah got her ring back. How did they do it? Peter locked the box with the ring and sent it to Sarah. When Sarah received the box, she added her lock and sent it back. Peter received the box and removed his lock. Then he sent the box back to Sarah. She opened the lock with her key and got the ring. Man, these folks lead complicated lives, don't you think? In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candies. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relham came back home after a long day at the club. Her three daughters had been staying at home. The woman asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd gone shopping for a new board game and then spent the day playing it with her friends. Elle said that she had been partying with her classmates in the pool. Ava said that she had been binge-watching TV shows all day and eating ice cream. Mrs. Relham could tell that one of her daughters lied. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the board game she bought is unpacked. She couldn't be playing it. Four friends were driving to New York City for the weekend. The music in the car was on and everyone was in a good mood, so the driver got distracted and got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started an investigation. He asked the guys who had been driving, but no one wanted to take the blame. Then the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who was driving? Look, there is a purse hanging on the driver's seat. It must belong to a girl. There's just one girl in the group, so she's likely to be the driver. Mrs. Miller came back home after work and asked what her daughters had been doing all day. They were all grounded and weren't allowed to leave the house or watch TV. Kaylee said that she had been doing housework and had just finished cooking pizza for dinner. Ellery said that she had been upstairs in her room reading. Lilith said that she'd spent the day cleaning her room. Who's lying? It's Kaylee. She said that she had made this pizza herself. But why is there a pizza box in the garbage? She ordered the pizza and was probably doing something else instead. It was a cold fall day. Mr. Jones was at home drinking tea and reading his newspaper. He also peeked out of the window from time to time. There, four teens, Mark, Davin, Bexley, and Penny were having a picnic. Suddenly, a ball broke the window of his living room. The teens started to pack their things. They didn't want to confess who had done this. In the evening, Mr. Jones got a note, but inside, there was just a question mark. Do you know who broke the window? The question mark is a hint. It literally means question mark. So Mark must be the one who did it. Adele found her friend Oliver on the floor of his studio in the attic. She called the police. The officer who came asked the girl to tell him what had happened. Adele said that she had been walking past Oliver's house and noticed that the lights had been on. She came up to the window, peeked inside, and saw him on the floor. She called the police and ran into the house. The police didn't believe her. Do you? No, it doesn't sound right. The guy was in the attic. Adele couldn't possibly see him through the window, unless she was 20 feet tall. On Wednesday, a high school student, Layla, went missing. There are three suspects. Mrs. Adams, the director. Mrs. Smith, a school cook and Mr. Jones, a cleaning man. 
Mrs. Adams said that she had a lot of work and spent the whole day in her office, never leaving it. Mrs. Smith said that after the working day, she had to stay in the kitchen to do some cleaning before the weekend. Mr. Jones said that he'd left after classes to do some shopping. He only returned several hours later. Who is guilty? There's something suspicious about Mrs. Smith, the cook. It's Wednesday, so what weekend cleaning is she talking about? Alan was traveling from Madrid to Amsterdam. But when his train arrived at the station, he wasn't there. His friend reported his disappearance. The police found some traces just a couple of hundred miles away from Madrid. First, they saw Alan's footsteps, and a bit further away from there, his suitcase was found. Then they interrogated the man who was the last to see Alan. He said that Alan hadn't had a train ticket. So when he saw the conductor coming, he threw his suitcase and then jumped from the train himself. Do you believe this man? If it were true, the police would have first found the suitcase and then Alan's footsteps. But in this case, we can conclude that the guy didn't jump himself. He was pushed off the train. So Rick wants to become a famous chef. But the cooking school only accepts applicants over 18. Rick's brother Jeff is twice older than Rick. Rick's sister Ruth is twice younger than Jeff. She turned 18 this year. So Sherlock, can Rick apply for his dream school this year? Yep, he's 18 years old. Rick and Ruth are of the same age because they're twins. Rick has prepared all papers for the cooking school, but he still needs to get some work experience and recommendations to get accepted. He found three job ads. Bill has a small diner on the fourth floor of the local shopping mall. He needs help in the kitchen. Holly offers a part-time internship at her fancy sushi restaurant. But first, you need to pay $300 for a two-week training. Sam needs an assistant in his noodle shop. Now, only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you tell which one? Hmm, there's no fourth floor in this shopping mall. Holly's picture is hanging on the window of the restaurant, and it says scammer. So Rick should choose Sam. Sam liked Rick's skills and CV, but he wanted to test his intelligence before hiring him. That's why he gave Rick this list of ingredients and asked him to bring them from the pantry of the cafe. Unfortunately, Sam coded this list. Can you help Rick find all the products? Here's the first ingredient. I always try to catch up with my buddy Mustard. What am I? Have you guessed? It's ketchup. Here's the next one. My closest friend is peanut butter. What am I? The second ingredient is jelly. I'm a nut that is only delicious when fried or baked. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a donut. I am a bird, I am a fruit, and I am a person at the same time. What am I? A kiwi. I go along with most veggies and snacks beside me. What am I? I'm a dip. <laughs> it's nothing personal. I'm a cup that doesn't hold any water. What am I? I'm talking about a cupcake here. A little pool with two layers of water around it. One is white and soft, 
and the other is dark and hard amidst a light brown grassy lawn with an outline of green grass. What's that all about? It's a coconut. It's hard to get a smooth bite, and you can chew me for a long time if I'm too dry. What am I? And the correct answer is jerky. I'm a green veggie that looks like a tiny tree. What am I? Can you guess? I'm broccoli. A time when they're green, a time when they're brown. But both of these times cause me to frown. But just in between, for a very short while, they're perfect in yellow and cause me to smile. What are they? Well, I'm sure you've guessed it's all about grapes. People confuse me with a vegetable, but I'm actually a fruit. I'm red when I'm ripe, and I'm sliced and served on burgers. What am I? A tomato or tomato? I'm the type of room you cannot enter or leave. I raise from the ground below. I can be poisonous or a delicious treat. What am I? Can you guess? All of this is about a mushroom. You throw away my outside and you cook my inside. Then you eat me from the outside and throw away what's inside. What am I? The correct answer is corn. I'm the kind of food that mummies like to eat. What am I? It's a wrap. Oh, really? Time for the final ingredient. I wear a red coat and have a stone inside my throat. Who am I? I'm a cherry. Hey, great job. Rick has brought all the ingredients. Sam hired him right away and asked him to take orders. Rick saw three customers in the cafe, but only one of them was a real human. Can you spot who exactly it was? This woman has gills just like a fish. She's a mermaid. And this guy's wearing trousers instead of a shirt, and he's trying to pay with shells. It's pretty clear he's not from this planet. Someone had stolen a tip box from Sam's Cafe. The police arrived almost at once. Rick said that he could only see the back of the robber. He knew it was a woman. The next day, another robbery took place. But this time, the guard managed to block the exit. The police arrived in a minute. They saw four women in the cafe. Can you tell who the thief was? It was Pam. She's the only one whose shoes are good enough for running. The police nearly arrested Pam, but she managed to escape. Rick ran after her and noticed she snuck into a school. Rick followed her. He noticed Pam's hoodie by one of the doors, so he entered the classroom. Rick faced four ladies who looked like Pam. Can you help him find the real Pam? There she is. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. These three handsome young men are brothers, identical triplets. Sam, he's very honest, and he always tells the truth. Bob always lies, and Alex is unpredictable. Sometimes he lies, but sometimes he tells the truth. Amy is the brother's old friend. She visited them after many years, and she could barely recognize who was who. 
Amy asked the guy who was sitting on the left, which brother is sitting in the middle? The answer was, oh, that's Sam. Amy then asked the brother in the middle, what's your name? And the reply was, I'm Alex. Then Amy turned to the brother on the right and asked, who's that guy in the middle? The brother replied, it's Bob. Those answers confused Amy because she had asked the same question three times and received three different answers. Can you help her figure out who is who? Sam always tells the truth, so the brother on the left cannot be Sam because, otherwise, he wouldn't be able to call someone else by his name. The brother in the middle cannot be Sam for the same reason. So the brother on the right must be Sam. And since we know he always tells the truth, the guy in the middle is Bob, and the brother on the left is Alex. Both Bob and Alex lied to Amy. No wonder she hasn't seen them in years. Daniel lent $100 to Alex, one of the three triplets. Sometime later, Daniel wanted to get his money back. One morning, he meets one of the triplets not far from his house. Daniel can ask him a three-word question. Sam always tells the truth, while Bob and Alex always lie. What question should Daniel ask? The right question would be, are you Bob? Here's the list of possible replies the guy can give. If it's Sam, he'll say no. If it's Bob, he'll also say no. And if it's Alex, his reply will be yes. That's why, if Daniel hears yes, he can ask for his money. Sam, Bob, and Alex bought some chocolate candies. Sam gave Bob and Alex as many candies as they already had. Then Bob gave Sam and Alex as many candies as they already had. And finally, Alex gave Bob and Sam as many chocolates as they already had. Now, each of the brothers has 24 candies. How many chocolates did they have in the beginning? At first, Sam had 39 candies, Bob had 21, and Alex had 12. You can solve the riddle this way. Have a look. Bob leaves home and turns right three times. He wants to return home, but he's scared of Sam, who's wearing a mask. What's going on here? The guys are playing baseball. Sam wants to cross the Sahara Desert. This risky journey will take six days. But unfortunately, one man can only carry enough food and water for four days. Can you calculate the smallest number of other people that will need to help Sam carry enough food across the desert? Two people. Let's suppose that Sam's brothers, Alex and Bob, agree to help him out. Never mind that Bob always lies. By the end of the first day, they'll have enough food for 9 days. 4 plus 4 plus 1. Now Alex can head back home with a 1-day food package. Meanwhile, Sam and Bob can continue their journey with an 8-day package. By the end of the second day, the total food supply will reduce to 6 food packages. Now Bob can grab enough food for 2 days and go home. At this point, Sam will still have a 4-day food package to fulfill his dream. Sam met a genie in the middle of the desert. The genie said, Hi, I'm Leo. If you solve my riddle, I'm going to fulfill your wishes. But if you fail, you'll serve me till the end of infinity. Deal? Well, Sam agreed. Here's the riddle. It's not alive, but it grows. It doesn't have lungs, but it needs air. It can't be washed, but it's never dirty. What is it? Can you figure it out? The correct answer is fire. First of all, Sam asked the genie for some cash. Nine rare and priceless gold coins appeared in front of the guy. Leo gave Sam balance scales and said, These coins look absolutely identical, but one of them is fake. 
the fake coin is lighter than the rest. What's the smallest number of weightings you'll need to find the fake coin? The correct answer is 2. First, Sam should divide the coins into three equal piles. Then he should place a pile on each side of the scales, leaving the remaining pile of three coins on the ground. If the scales remain balanced, it means that the six coins on the scale are real and the fake coin is in the third pile. But if the scales do tip, Sam will easily find out which pile contains the fake coin. Spoiler, the pile which is lighter. Either way, he should put six gold coins aside and leave only the lightest pile. Then he can use the same method to find the third coin, by putting one coin on each side of the scales and leaving the third one in his hand. Sam was hungry, so he had one more wish, to have dinner. Leo began frying some fish in a pan that could only fit two fish at once. It takes five minutes to fry one side of a fish. What's the shortest time Leo needs to fry three fish in one pan? Fifteen minutes. Leo should put two fish in the pan and fry them for five minutes. Then he should take one fish out and then turn the other one over. After that, Leo should start frying the third fish. He should fry both fish for five minutes. The first fish will be ready, so he should put it away on a plate while turning the other over. Now, he should put the half-fried fish back in the pan and fry two fish for five more minutes. Voila! All three fish are now ready. Sam left the desert and decided to stay in this little village to get some rest. He wanted to get a haircut and a shave after his long journey. There were only two barber shops in this village. In the first shop, the barber was handsome with a neat haircut. He was well-dressed, and the place looked tidy and clean. Meanwhile, the barber from the second shop was shabbily dressed. His hair was cut in a weird way, and his clothes had stains from last night's dinner. His place didn't look clean at all. Which barber shop should Sam go to, and why? Since there are only two barbers in the village, it's obvious that the tidy barber must have his hair done by the other, and the second barber must have used the services of the first man. Therefore, Sam should choose the barber from the second shop because he's more professional. Two business partners, Rick and Frank, met in a restaurant. It was a hot summer day, so they ordered cold mint tea with ice. Rick gulped down five glasses of this drink during lunch. Meanwhile, Frank managed to drink only one glass. Soon after that, Frank fainted and fell to the floor. Doctors diagnosed severe poisoning, but Rick was feeling completely fine. The police found out that both glasses contained poison. How did Rick, who had drunk five glasses of this tea, avoid any consequences? Rick survived because the poison was in the ice cubes. He drank quickly, and the ice had no time to melt in his drink. As for Frank, he drank his tea slowly, and the ice melted in his drink to poison it heavily. You pronounce me as one, but write me as three. You can't read this riddle without me. What am I? The correct answer is I. Bob bought a parrot from a pet shop and put it in a beautiful silver cage. The seller warned Bob that this parrot could give birth every two months, and it can deliver up to five babies at a time. How many parrots will Bob have in a year? Just one, because he only bought one bird, not two. I'm always trapped in my glass cage. I'm usually found at the bottom of the cage. If I climb higher, I get hotter. If I climb down, I get cooler. What am I?
The correct answer is a thermometer. A father is locked up in jail. His wife has gone bankrupt. Their son has to sell his hotel in order to gain some money. Yet their daughter doesn't care and is happy. How can someone be so heartless? The family is playing Monopoly, and the daughter is winning the game. We've arranged 10 coins on a table this way. Altogether, they form a triangle pointing upward. Can you invert the position of the triangle and make it point downward while moving only 3 coins? Here's the easiest way to do it. Just move these coins as shown. I'm always ahead of you, yet you can never see me. What am I? Tomorrow. Can you spot your name in this alphabet soup? Oh, there it is! Rosie and Melanie are having an argument. Rosie yells, I'm part of this club, let me in! And Melanie replies, Leave right now, you're not a member of our club. Can you figure out who's lying by just looking at this picture? Both ladies have club tattoos. But Melanie's tattoo is slightly different from the club's logo. Therefore, her membership must be fake. There's an old abandoned warehouse in the city. People say it's a haunted place. Everyone is too afraid to go there. But one day, three boys and two girls decide to visit the building and paint graffiti on its walls. They approach the warehouse, but one girl, Rachel, refuses to come inside. She wants to wait for her friends outside. The rest of the group goes into the house. They're already gone for a few minutes. Rachel is about to call them, but at this moment, all three boys and one girl come out of the house. Rachel realizes that ghosts live in the warehouse and runs away. How did she know that? Four people entered the building and four people came out. Where's the catch? One of the boys is different. It's not their friend. Besides, look at his legs. They're slightly transparent. Rachel immediately noticed this and ran away. Kenny is walking through an old abandoned hospital. There are portraits of doctors and some patients on the walls. Kenny illuminates his way with a flashlight. He goes down to the first floor and sees several people in white lab coats. They seem pretty normal and friendly. They're not the guys Kenny saw on the portraits, but he still realizes these doctors are ghosts. How did he figure it out? He was using a flashlight. When he pointed the beam at those people, they didn't cast shadows. It means they were not real. It's evening. Courtney leaves her house to go for a walk to the lake. The moon is shining, the water is calm, there's no wind. Courtney enjoys the silence and the chirping of crickets. She sits down on the grass, closes her eyes, and begins to meditate. At this moment, several people come out of the water. They sit next to Courtney, but she doesn't panic. She realizes she dozed off while meditating and sees a dream now. How did she know that? This time, trust your ears, not your eyes. Firstly, the sound of crickets disappeared. Also, there was no splashing heard when those people came out of the water. The prince of an unknown country arranged a huge party in his homeland. He invited all his friends and lots of celebrities, actors, musicians, and so on. And here he is, on the stage! He takes the microphone and thanks everyone for coming. But he sees only a few people in the hall. 
Yet he invited many more people. There are simple workers and rich people among his friends. They all live in different countries all over the world. Why haven't any of them arrived? The party is in an unknown country, remember? How could guests buy airplane tickets to an unknown place? Hey, I got a point there! Someone stole a collection of vinyl records from a rock star's house. To escape, the robber hid the records in a trash container. Then he disappeared into a dark alley. Fortunately, Detective Richardson caught him, along with two other suspects. Take a look at them. Who do you think the thief is? Look at this guy's shoes. An old banana peel has stuck to his sneaker. That's because he's been to the trash container. Jerry is walking through the woods. He's cold, hungry, and lost. The guy takes a few steps and stops because he hears something. He goes toward the source of the sound and finds a large clearing. There are three houses. Which one should Jerry enter? The house on the left is closed from the outside. There's a lock on the door, see? The house on the right seems safe. But look at these footprints leading to the door. These are wolf paw prints. Jerry should choose the house in the middle. A wanderer has been walking through the desert for several hours. He doesn't have any water left, and he's losing strength. He climbs a low hill and sees three lakes. They're far from one another, and only one of them is real. Help the wanderer distinguish the reality from a mirage. There are palm trees near all the lakes, but only one of them reflects the trees. It means that the lake on the right is real. You're walking along the beach. Suddenly, you hear a scream. A woman is calling for help. She's drowning. You run into the water and swim towards her. As soon as you approach her, you see three more people. They're all screaming, but only one of them needs help. The rest are mer-people who want to take you to their kingdom. How can you find out which one is human? Dive under the water to see who has a fishtail. Richard likes abandoned buildings and old castles. Today, he's going to check a huge house that belonged to a vampire a long time ago. Well, that's what the legends say. Richard certainly doesn't believe this. He takes his camera and sets off. It's dark and cold inside the house. Crackling sounds are coming from the corridor. Richard shines a flashlight and sees three vampires. Richard starts running away, but then he stops and returns. It seems these vampires are fake. How did the guy understand this? There's a mirror on the ceiling above the first vampire, and he gets reflected there. The second vampire has no fangs. And the third one, uh uh-oh, he seems to be real! Run! Now Richard wants to visit an abandoned hospital. There are rumors that werewolves live there. Richard is sure it's a myth. He's walking around dark hospital wards all night, but finds nothing. He's about to leave, but four men block the exit. They are howling and growling. Which of them is the real werewolf? No one. The full moon is shining through the windows, but these people haven't turned into monsters. But still, Richard runs away. It seems these guys are really crazy. A rich man comes to an exhibition of modern art. He's going to buy a new painting for his collection. The owner of the exhibition shows him three works of different artists. In the first picture, there's a green triangle with a sunflower in the middle. The second painting is of a tiger taking a selfie on his phone. In the third picture, there's a flying house. The collector is sure that one of the paintings is fake. Which one? Each canvas has the artist's signature and the date when it was created. 
The painting with the tiger is dated 1957. There were no mobile phones and selfies at that time. This picture is fake. Martin's nervous because today is his first DJ performance at an electronic music festival. He goes on the stage. The crowd is cheering. Martin puts on his headphones and turns on the first track. Music is playing, but people aren't dancing. Why? The music is only playing in the DJ's headphones. Martin hasn't connected the wire to the speaker, see? People are sitting in their seats. The lights turn off. Someone is chewing popcorn. Someone else is drinking soda. The movie starts. This is a horror. Someone screams. The ticket taker enters the hall. Several people haven't paid for their tickets. Guess who? No one has a ticket here. Free entrance, the note pinned to the back door claims. Jack is walking through an ancient, abandoned city in the desert. Treasure is hidden somewhere here. Jack checks the map and finds the right place. He starts digging. Six hours later, exhausted, he hits something with a shovel. It's a chest. Jack pulls it out of the ground, rips off the rusty lock, and opens it. The chest is filled with ancient gold coins. Each of them costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, Jack is incredibly rich. But he shouldn't be happy because all the coins are fake. Why is that? Each coin has a date, 145 BCE. It seems they're really old. But people who lived at that time couldn't write BCE on their coins because they didn't know they lived before the current era. You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom. But you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. And Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. The second, 
a big, burly, tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So, who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying? It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school, and the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens. So she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. So what should Claire do? Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do? Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. 
Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. 